This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic so, Society. Right before the beginning of RPC, you will see that some of these coins are actually um, included in RPC, but several of them are not. And so this is really the value of this catalog. As I say, this is the uh, cover of one of these, uh, one of the volumes, uh, the catalog per se, there are, it's in two volumes with the plates. And once again, I want to, sh to highlight that we have here all these co-authors uh, like Oliver Hoover, Suzanne Frey Cooper, Clive Stannard, Sofia Gremidi, Federico Carbone, David Ending, and Levi Yarrow that have participated. Some of them just wrote introductions. Some of them, like Oliver Hoover um, and Sofia Gremidi, Suzanne Frey Cooper, and Clive Stannard, actually uh, are co authors of entire sections. So, this is very important for me to highlight here. And in case you are interested in uh, uh, this uh, in this catalog, you can see here the link. Now, I'm using here again this very, very, very famous uh, um, statement by Michael Crawford that, in some way, really began it all. This idea of the progressive adaptation of monetary systems in the provinces right after or even begin the Roman conquest of these territories. And it says, for the fact that the Romans did not export their own coinage into the Greek world does not mean that their presence had no effect on existing uh, monetary patterns. And this is something that we will see definitely in the course of this presentation. Now, um, this is uh, um, another statement by Andrew Burnett in uh, a recent volume, which is called Grecia Capta, Graecia Capta, and which is edited, uh, a volume edited by Richard Ashton and Atam Badu. And he, uh, he, of course, is one of the authors of the Roman Provincial Carnage, uh, says something which is very important. You know? This work and a new approach seems very familiar now. And much of what we used to call Greek, or at least Hellenistic numismatics, now operates in a Roman framework. You know? Because, of course, we have the passage between Greek imperials and Roman provincial coinage. But it seems to me that one consequence has been that the debate has become fragmented and localized to Greece or Spain or wherever. And that as a result, we have tended to forget the broader picture of the Roman Empire as a whole. This was the, this idea, of course, was really at the core and is at the core of the Roman provincial project. But um, Rick Wichonke, in his vision, visionary really attitude to collecting, uh, thought that um, that the Roman influence on the monetary systems of these provinces began well before uh, mid first century BC. And of course, the reality is that the authors of RPC themselves would agree on that. And so this catalog uh, is, is in some way important because it is, can be considered a sort of RPC zero. So it really tells the tale of uh, what is before RPC. So when the Romans, the coinages don't look Roman at all, there is in some cases no Roman magistrate on them, they just look Greek, but still the Romans are somewhat and somehow involved in their production. And we will see in which ways they were involved because it changes uh, greatly from province to province. Okay, I'll just go with the next slide. This is was the Uchonke collection looked like, actually still looks like. We're going now to integrate finally the Uchonke collection into the ANS collection, which is what, and this is how the 
with Chunky Catalog, let's say, looks like. One thing I wanted to ask you to tell you is that I'm going to do this presentation, show you a lot of coins. Uh, usually what we do is that we leave the uh, discussion for the end, but I have to say since I'm going to show you some pretty specific coins, some overstrikes that are basically unique, uh, in case any of you has uh, a pressing question, just please raise your hand and we will unmute you so that you can, uh, uh, so that you can ask the questions directly while I'm showing the coin, okay? So the Wuchonke catalog consists of 36 sections and uh, uh, 36 sections and it has been organized when, whenever possible in a way that is very similar to RPC, because as we said, is in somewhat considered and organized as sort of RPC zero. But great importance uh, uh, is being given to Celtic coinages. So uh, Rick, uh, following in this uh, um, Michael Crawford, uh, um, gave importance to Celtic coinages, which anyway, the Celtic coinages both in, uh, uh, especially in Gaul, uh, show the influence of, Rome, of the Romans. But we have already discussed this on December 15. Non-state coinages, imitations that we have already discussed for the West. But then, as I said, usually uh, what has been followed, uh, the criteria, the organizational criteria that's been followed in the catalog is a geographical criteria. But some, sometimes uh, the amount of coinage of a certain typology was so enormous in some way that we des I decided to create uh, different sections for the Sistophori, so the reduced standard uh, um, tetradrums issued in the province of Asia and before that in the Italic Kingdom and for the so-called fleet coinage of Mark Antony. And we will discuss both these coinages. And I also decided to include Roman and Italian coinage. In, in, of course, they were not, uh, you know, they are not included in RPC for clear reasons, because in some cases we have uh, unofficial issues that somewhat relate to non-state coinages also issued in other provinces. So colonial coinages, for example, the super important coinage of Pestum or the coinage of Copia that we have already discussed last time, unofficial issues, and so and so. So this is us, Roman, Rome's conquest in the Mediterranean up to the death of Julius Caesar. We saw already this map last time, and so now, this time, we will be discussing this part, the coinage issued in the East. So I'm here using a slide uh, that was presented at the conference in honor of uh, Rick at the beginning of 2021 by uh, Francois de Calatay. And here he defines what he calls uh, surrogate coinages. So several of the coinages we're going to discuss today are what could be called surrogate coinages. What is the idea of surrogate coinage? This term, while it was used by Francois de Calatay during this conference, has been introduced in a, by, by an article by Peter Toneman in 2019 on the Numismatic Chronicle. The idea of a surrogate coinage is a coinage that was already being produced in a certain territory, in certain area, region, before the arrival of the Romans, but just continued being issued uh, under the Romans. But as you can see, here there is a clear distinction that has been done between new coinages issued in the provinces and so-called surrogate coinages. So, for example, a surrogate coinage, the 
one of the very important example of surrogate carnage, surrogate carnages are probably the cystophori. Okay, the cystophori were already issued in the Attali kingdom before the Romans and just went on being issued under the Romans until uh, the name of Roman magistrate appeared in the whole uh, sequence, in the whole, uh, all over, in all the series, uh, series. And at that point, the coinage is no more a surrogate coinage, so a direct continuation of a pre-Roman coinage, but it becomes a new coinage. As you see, Latin legends, Roman name full coinage is a new coinage. Of course, surrogate, in, in, on the contrary, is when a Roman name just appears in one, in one of the issues, for example. Now, you can also have, oh, sorry, you can also have here some technical mistakes, which I will see brokerages, for example. Now, Greek coinage usually does not have brokerages, or at least has very few. And at a certain point in some coinage, some surrogate coins, as I will show you in a second, you have the appearance of brokerages. Now, this is another map uh, drawn by Francois. And you see here, pretty interesting, uh, the difference. Uh, you see these uh, blue, uh, light blue coinages here are all uh, what you will say surrogate coinages. So coinages that are, were somewhat pre-Roman and continue under the Romans. And uh, the white ones are new coinages, coinages that even if they look Greek, they're clearly issued by the Romans because they are Roman magistrate all over the sequence and so on. Now, I want to show you now, for example, uh, this one could be an overstrike over, or a brokerage. I will stop sharing my screen. But for example, this is, and I'll, let me just zoom on it. OK, this is uh, a Sistophorus from Laodicea. So a uh, complete die study of the Sistophory is about to be published. Uh, but I would like you now, Sistophory never never, hardly ever, at least this specific Sistophore, Sistophore, pre-Augustan Sistophore, hardly ever have uh, this kind of huge technical mistakes. Now, this could be a brokerage. This could be, of course, a double strike. I mean, there are lots of uh, uh, Sistophore that have this double striking. But this one, I mean, I showed it to several people. And so some of them told me that it's a double, over, a double striking or it's a brokerage, but anyway, I can tell you for a fact that this one is a Laodicean Sistophora, and this was issued in the 70s. I can tell you that this is this huge, 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 huge debate, which is another element that is pretty interesting. And this, this could be, let's say, interpreted as a sign of the presence of the Romans. Now, I'll show you the reverse that has nothing strange, but you see the name of the magistrate, Olympiodorus Hermoganu, because look at the next one that I will show you, and this you will see there is also something pretty funky going on, and this is an issue from the same magistrate. I will just click on it, because look at this. If you look at the details here, you can clearly see this is part of the reverse. You see that you can clearly see, OK, uh, uh, some, uh, some, some sort of legend here that clearly has nothing to do uh, with the obverse, OK, of this coin. Look at this here. I'll show you a lot of overstrikes today, because I think that's super cool, I mean, this actually co actual collection. And you can perhaps also see that there are some signs here. The reverse seems, on the contrary, pretty normal. 
but you can see that there is something funky also going over going on here so this could be an example of clashed dice this is the only example we have for Cisovari with clashed dice. So it's pretty interesting to see, for example, this is Laodicea in the 70s, this drop, uh, drop of fineness, lots of technical mistakes just concentrated in these issues, and this is really not something that we see in these. And of course, this can be perhaps uh, connected with the third Mithridatic War. So we can even think that these Laodicea and Sistovori were like, you know, issued very, very quickly just for that. But this is, I wanted just to give you an example of what a surrogate coinage could look like, okay? So I'll just resume uh, uh, with my uh, slide presentation. This is what I show you. So I'll begin uh, uh, with the East, uh, with Achaea and Macedonia. Now, uh, the first new coinage, so new coinage meaning Greek coinage, uh, Greek coinage, Greek looking coinage issued in the provinces, but that is clearly Roman, that has Roman names in all the series, uh, is of course, the stutter of Flamininus. It's evident that uh, the model for the stator of Flamininus uh, was the stator of Alexander the Great. Interestingly enough, this is also the first portrait of a Roman on coinage. You can clearly see here Titus Titi Quincti, so the use, of course, of the genitive also of Titus Quincius Flamininus that uh, is uh, using, uh, make use of what was the Greek usage of the genitive, of course, like Alexandru here on coinage. This was issued after 196 uh, BCE, after the Battle of Skinos Kefale. I mean, unfortunately, we don't have so many of them, but Anyway, this was the first new coinage. But another interesting, uh, super, super interesting uh, coinage that has been discussed a lot and whose nature still, let's say, uh, debated, even if we have the definitive, we've been having the definitive dice study for this coinage since 1961 with Margaret Thompson, uh, who studied exactly the new style uh, Athenian tetradrums, um, is exactly this coinage of Athens. So, for example, um, Bresson and Calatei have been said that this was somewhat connected clearly to the presence of the Romans, makes sense. In some way, you have this one, but uh, what is incredibly interesting about these issues, uh, whose even starting date has been debated, the Markle Thompson thought it was to be dated in the 180s. I think they should be dated in the 160s, but this is different, and perhaps, I mean, I'm very, very, very willing to discuss this, but I think we have a lot to discuss, but I think that what is incredibly, incredibly interesting and where the Romans for sure enter and these for sure become what we call a surrogate coinage is uh, in the early first century uh, BCE. We know that Plutarch calls, talks about uh, the so-called Luculea, Luculea, so the Luculans, so the coins of Luculus, were also mentioned in an inscription at Delphi. Um, he talks about the importance of this coinage, and we know that these coinages were issued on behalf of the Roman army during the war against Mithridates the sixth. It's thought soon after Sulla's capture of Athens, uh, in reality, 
I would say that, um, and this has been shown in a definitive way in 2017 by Pierre Assemacher, that they, will, uh, they were issued right before the capture of Athens, because I'll show you what was issued quite certainly after the capture of Athens. Uh, you can see here uh, these, uh, um, these monograms that have been, uh, um, have been, now it's generally acknowledged, uh, been interpreted as Marcus Lucullus Tamius, uh, Tamius, uh, Tamius, sorry, which means uh, uh, treasurer, so questor, Marcus Lucullus. So the lieutenant of Sulla is Lucius Lucullus. This Marcus Lucullus would have been his brother. And uh, already, I have to say that uh, Margaret Thompson in 1961 thought that these new style uh, tether drums looked different from the other tether drums. So she thought that the way she calls them in their book, Pseudo Autinians. So the idea, let's say, a semagher idea uh, in his latest article on these uh, issues is that those issues, these issues specifically, this one I'm showing you, were issued outside of Athens, because of course Mithridates was in Athens, so Mithridates, I mean, Athens sided with Mithridates, uh, possibly, so they were issued outside of Athens uh, using uh, uh, the silver that was plundered by the sanctuaries in the Peloponnese. So these were really the coinage used by the Romans. So a surrogate coinage, really, in some way, because it's just continuing the series of the Athenian tetradrums, but clearly you can see the name of the Romans. What is Roman for sure and has been issued after the capture of uh, Athens at the ends of Lucullus and Sulla is this issue, which is pretty, pretty rare. So I'm stop sharing this uh, so that you can see this. Uh, and I'll just here, we don't need to. OK, here you go. Look at this. These are the famous new style tether drums with the trophy issues. There are very few of them. Um, Margaret Thompson, in her incredible catalog, only had 10 specimens uh, of them uh, and had, if I remember correctly, four dice. Okay, this one in the Wichonke collection adds a fifth die to this, uh, uh, to this coinage. But what is super interesting here are these two trophies that are unanimously, let's say, almost unanimously uh, interpreted as the two trophies that were erected by Sulla to commemorate uh, his uh, victories on uh, uh, Mithridates uh, in uh, uh, Orcomenos and uh, Keronea. And we are sure that about this connection with Sulla because, uh, and sorry, I will share my screen again, because you see here, these are the, this is a uh, denarius issued by Sulla, and you can clearly see that on the denarius you have exactly the same trophies. So the incredible value here is that these coins are enormously rare, and also that the Wichonke collection adds one more die to the dice we already knew for this. Very, very rare coinage. I mean, I believe me, I've been trying, for example, I was okay checking on coin archives uh, how many of these uh, trophies issues were. I mean, I could find, uh, and I think I found two, 
as far as the coin archives goes. I mean, it's online. So it shows you something about really the incredible rarity of these coins and how valuable this is. So I'll just continue uh, with Macedonia. And you see Macedonia in the Aegean world. We know that um, in the, during the Third Macedonian War, Rome declares war against Perseus, which is the last, so it's the last of the Antigonids, the kings, the Hellenistic kings of Macedonia. And in 168, uh, Lucius Emilius Paulus defeats Perseus and puts him on display. Okay. In his triumph, if you've ever been to the Vidolai Museum, you will see exactly this painting with the representation of uh, Perseus brought on display during this triumph. triumph. Macedonia is broken up into, in four, into four republics. All private transactions, trade and marriage as, are prohibited, and so on. So now, what, so I just want to show you now what the, the change in the, or not, the change of the Macedonian coinage after 168. After 168, Macedonia has, is divided in four different districts, which are independent, completely independent. And so we will see coinage issued by the different, what is called Meridas. Now, I want to highlight that several of the things I'll be, I will be saying about Macedonian coinage uh, can be found in uh, the Wichonke catalog. Uh, uh, it's the section of Macedonia, which has been co-authored by Sofia Gremidi, also wrote the very, entirely wrote the very interesting introduction, and she's also publishing an article on the overstrikes that I will show you. So anyway, these were the tetradrums issued in Pelor and Fibulis Mint by Perseus, the last of the Antigonids. But we now know that there was already a coinage issued, tether drums issued by the Merides, uh, the Merides, uh, uh, Merides, sorry, in Macedonia, even before the end of the Antigonid power. So as the Romans usually do, and we will see that for the province of Asia, but it's also true for other provinces, they used uh, the, uh, the administrative uh, districts that were already in existence uh, uh, before the end, basically, of the Antigonic Kingdom, than to organize the, these independent republics. Ben, can I ask you to put the uh, all these uh, observations in the chat uh, here on the screen so that I can see them. Sorry, because I... Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much, Mike, for showing that. Thank you very, very much. Okay, great. So you see that, for example, at ANS, uh, we have uh, this uh, silver tether drum. It's a very, very rare one. But still, we have, for example, this one that now is being recognized with Zeus and Europe, Europa on the bull. And you can read here Macedonians of the Macedonian protests. Now, but after Pydna, when, as I said, Macedonia is then divided into these four republics, you can see what happens here. And I want to show you, um, I want to show you, so I will stop sharing some of the coins in our collection. So you see, the Romans, what the Romans will do is that they will keep uh, issuing, this is a very beautiful example, so from, um, from Amphibolis, um, so the capital of the Protes, so of the first Merides, Look at this, this beautiful, beautiful um, decoration with Macedonian uh, shield. This Macedonian shield with, of course, the uh, Argiad star and Artemis. I mean, very incredibly beautiful. But so uh, 
the four of the four, let's say, meridas that we have, uh, we know that the first, the, the first, the prote, and the second, the deutera, issued tetradrons, while uh, issued silver. The fourth and the third uh, issued bronze, as far as we know. So the protes, uh, the, uh, the silver coinage issued by the first Maris, uh, is uh, pretty, uh, pretty consistent uh, and uh, has been, this coinage has been published uh, by Ilya Prokopov in a book of 2012. And on the contrary, the coinage, the silver coinage of the second one of the Deuteras, uh, as you can read here, so the second Maris uh, is incredibly rare. So we are, once again, uh, the Wichanke collection includes uh, these other super, super rare coinage. So now I will just go back once again to my little presentation here. And here you go. Um, we don't have these, unfortunately. Um, I mean, we have at uh, the ANS collection some of the drachme by uh, Philip the Six Andriscos, uh, who, after 148, basically, after the provincialization of their Macedonia actually became a province, uh, tried to uh, add the rebellion, basically, against the Roman power. But I would like you to show you that clearly, clearly, I mean, this is evident in this case, uh, not only the Romans were present in 148, but the Roman denarii were circulating at large in Macedonia, as we know very well, clearly, from several publications, but also by this fantastic overstrike that I find so, so beautiful. Look at this. You see that clearly that this drachma, drum by uh, on Philip Andriscus has been overstruck uh, on uh, this, uh, on a denarius by Caius Terentius Lucanus. Look at Rome here. You can clearly see the chin and the nose of Rome. And even better here, I mean, fantastic. Look at the hooves of the horses here. And there are other um, specimens where you can clearly identify, because this you could only see that the fact that this was a denarius. But there are other specimens where you clearly see that it was overstruck on uh, Terentius Lucanus denarii, which, as you see, were issued right before uh, this rebellion, which really tells you how, for example, Roman denarii were immediately exported to Macedonia. So I widely used the denarii in Macedonia where, which we know because, of course, uh, even before it becomes a province, Macedonia was already a protectorate of the Romans that divided in four republics and so and so. And then what happens, and there you go, we have the passage after the provincialization of Macedonia from what we would call a surrogate coinage that the Protes and uh, Deuteras uh, Merides coinages were, because they continued uh, the coinages which were before the, before Pidna, before the defeat of Perseus, you have here this one that clearly, as you can see from this, uh, from the PowerPoint, and as you will see clearly now from the uh, pictures, you can see here that you have a Roman legend, which is what we uh, think as a, exactly like this is one of the criteria for identifying what we call new coinages. And there you go. This is one of, uh, one of the specimens uh, of the Wuchonke collection. Please notice that the obverse uh, is absolutely the same as the surrogate coinages. The difference 
is leg for legatus, lieutenant, so legatus is course has to do really with the province. So you have still the legend in Greek, Macedonon, of the Macedonians, but then you have leg like legatus. So and this is dated between the end of the second century BC and the early first century BC. But one of the most, uh, let's say, um, this is considered as one of the most, I mean, enigmatic uh, um, coinages, let's say, issued uh, issued uh, in Macedonia and anyway pre-RPC coinages uh, is the so-called Esilla coinage. Now, uh, you can see here on the obverse Alexander the Great represented the like Zeus Ammon. Uh, so with the ram horns, and you can see our the familiar, uh, the familiar legend here. Uh, but on the reverse, uh, we have uh, these uh, Azillas Q for Questor uh, with the Situla. So this is the club that we saw clearly. The club is a clear reference. Uh, of uh, the pre-Roman coinage of Macedonia and also the post-Pidna, post-168 coinage of Macedonia. And you have uh, the Sella Curulis, uh, so, uh, uh, which is, of course, uh, connected uh, with the question. Uh, if you have any interest uh, in uh, this representation of Sella Curulis on coinage, uh, for example, there is a very interesting book published by Mariangela Puglisi, precisely on this. But as uh, I I want you to show you something which is really I, mean, I find super fun, which is this other coin uh, coin here. You can see that the types are precisely the same. I mean. Uh, and you can tell me that this coin is not exactly in the best conditions, but I'm telling you this is another enormously rare, um, enormously rare coin, because as you can see here, while the types are clearly the types of Ezilla, you can read here, Sura Legatus and proconsul okay and i will sure i will share the screen again with you because i will show you uh, sorry and then i will see the, who this look who, who this sura was we have this uh, on the life of sula written by plutarch and you can see that for here he was confronted this is uh, like uh, Lucullus, uh, Lucullus with his army during the first Mithridatic War, by Brutius Sura, who was a lieutenant of Santius, the Praetor of Macedonia. Okay, and this Sura, whose name we will see also on the so-called Tasos Conage, which I will show you in a second, uh, is here on this very, very rare coinage. Okay, now I will also want to show you another fun thing. But before showing you the coin, I have unfortunately to go back sharing the screen. Sorry for this going back and forth, but it's really necessary. Now, Ezillas, uh, as we say, Ezilla in theory was as this coinage that now has been dated between uh, 90, uh, between uh, 90, let's say, and uh, um, and 75, possibly even later, with some issues which have the name of uh, Caesar, uh, Caesar, not Julius Caesar, but another praetor. But what I want to show you here is that we have the Uchanke collection includes a super, super rare, I think the only example we have, okay? So that you saw that in the um, masterful work, reference work on Isilla's coinage, 
this is the coin that has been uh, is quoted because there is no other coin because this is an overstrike of a coin of Ezillas that, of course, as, as we have seen, continues the types of, uh, that were used uh, in Macedonia on a coin that, in theory, was produced in a different, uh, in a different, uh, um, in a different province, the province of Trace, okay? So this shows, again, how, and these coinages, before the beginning, before the arrival of the Roman, I mean, Tassus had, uh, had issued coinage, even pre-Roman coinage, let's say, a lot of it. Um, but Macedonian tetradrums and Thracian tetradrums didn't usually circulate together. So this overstrike, uh, that I will show you in a second, I have the coin, shows uh, how enormously important the Roman presence was and how the Roman presence unified the, the circulation pool of this. There are some people who even think uh, that uh, Aesilla stratodrums and the stasis like tetradrums perhaps would, were even issued in the same place. For this, we will need, for example, metallurgical analysis. We know that they circulated, in some cases, they circulated together. And now, I can stop sharing the screen and actually, sorry, uh, oh yes, stop sharing, and showing you the coin. Look, you see here, look at this. This thing here, if you put it like this, this is, you can see, Lambda Omicron, so Heracleus, uh, Heracleus, this has to do, so this is part of the legend of this Tassian uh, tetradrum, okay? Uh, some, uh, you can also see that here you can see part of the curls of the Dionysus that you will see later. But I think that the conclusive uh, proof of this overstrike is here on the reverse. So to say, this is another absolutely unique thing. I mean, so, and I will then, uh, um, I mean, I know we're late, and of course I would have to show you so much more. So I will just, but I just want, I think it's better that you have at least a preview of, uh, of this incredible uh, collection, really. So Thrace and the Romans, uh, you see, the Romans declare the freedom of the cities, so you have Thrace, uh, but uh, Prokopov, Ivelia Prokopov, the same one that I have mentioned for uh, the tetradrums, the Macedonian tetradrums, also issued a very important catalog in 2006 uh, on Tasian coinage, and he identified what he calls Tasian style coinage. So Tasian style coinage, which means exactly what we were talking about, is surrogate coinage. Okay, so surrogate coinage issued by uh, the Romans, um, issued by the Romans, in continuing continuing the previous ones. Now. Of course, we are, as usual, and always strapped for time, but the same Ezillas that we had there, the Ezillas which has never been identified, please notice this monogram here. This is from Tassus. This has been identified, I mean, there has been a lot of discussion on this, whether this is Aesilas or not. I mean, for example, uh, Sofia Gremidi in the Macedon on the, on the, the Chonke catalog thinks this is Aesilas. So in this case, if this is actually Aesilas, this really shows the fact that whoever was in charge of Macedonia was also controlling production in trace, or at least in Tasian, for this Tasian like. Um, Coinage. But if we were not sure about Ezulas, 
we are definitely sure about the present of presence of sura the sura we saw on the macedonian tetodoms is here present on this tassos like coinage i mean there is no doubt about this reading in this case i mean we can be absolutely sure so for sure there is a clear link between these two productions whose uh, peak was during the first Mithridatic War, when we know that the Roman armies were there, and Sulla, we know, was strapped for money because Rome was not supporting him. And uh, please, I, I want to share you another, show you another overstrike, but before showing you the coin, I want, echo. this is the coin I'm going to show you. Please, Notice here, it's so evident here, non, you read the Macedonon, what is usually in the Ezila, and you can see here also part of the oak of the Ezila's coinage. Once again, this is unprecedented. I mean, like this, as you see, Prokopov has none of this. So this is the only specimen we have known, as far as I know, at least. Uh, of Tassos overstruck over Ezilas, and here is the coin again. Uh, yes, now I will try. Yes, let's see if I can put it in a way so that you can enjoy the clear, the non look. Let's see if uh, with the light, we can show you this. Yes, look, you can see if I do this, you can clearly see. Look. Omega Ni is there. And then on the reverse, uh, and then uh, I don't need to do this, uh, you can see here part of, you see, the oak of Zilas. So it's, it's fantastic. I mean, this is, I mean, uh, I hope I can. Uh, get you to, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, of course you are here because you're interested in this, but this is incredible. So these overstrikes show us that, for example, Trace and Macedonia at this point had a shared circulation pool that, for example, the Macedonia or the Auto Roman authority in Macedonia was producing uh, coinage in the name of the Tassians, I mean, so there doesn't need to be on Tassus. Then we have other interesting coinages, I mean, and I know it's late, so I will just, uh, just uh, stay with this, and uh, even if I would have so much more, but perhaps we'll have other installations of this. But you see here this uh, bronze uh, uh, coinage uh, of Macedonia, the famous historical issues. Now, we know that um, Sicily, after the institution of the province of Sicily, that, as you know, was the first province ever established by the Romans, uh, we had historical coinage being issued. So uh, the idea, even if we don't know whether these bronzes were issued after Pidna, so 168, or after 148, after the date of the institution of the province of Macedonia. But if comparanda are to be used as a criteria, at least part of it, uh, is that the idea is that, for example, in Sicily, what happened is that the Romans had custodial issues right after the institution of the province. So we can imagine that perhaps they did the same for Macedonia, so they would be after 148. But as we say, this is pure conjecture. But what is super interesting about these custodial issues you see here is that um, they are hardly ever, the first one, this Fulcinius and Publilius, are hardly ever overstruck, okay? Because this would be interesting for us to see whether they were overstruck or no. For example, this is Publilius. Now, 
Um, we know, because exactly this is what, also this is, there is this forthcoming paper by Sofia Gremidi, we know actually of only three overstrikes of uh, uh, the Publilius and Fulcinius issues on previous issues. Uh, one was found by Turazoglu in uh, Yanis Tirazoglu in some excavations. Now I sincerely or now not recall the name, but you will read the paper, uh, I think, by Sofia Gremidi very soon uh, by, the end, and by the end of the year. So just to say, advertising the paper. But the other two of these, uh, the other two of these overstrikes uh, are in the Wichonke collection, which is incredible. So now I'm showing you this overstrike. I think you will see this better here. Look, this is uh, the coin we have uh, in the Wichonke collection. And you can here see, clearly see here, something strange going on. Look at that. You can see here uh, traces uh, of serration. And so, and also some traces of M, uh, A, E, Epsilon is visible, Mu, and possibly this is uh, overstruck on this issue, so this pre-168 uh, issue. And as I said, this is incredibly rare. I mean, as I said, this is... Uh, this one is the second overstrike known, okay, of this issue. And I want to show you the coin now, here. Uh, oh, you cannot see it. Uh, let's see if I can show you better. Yes. Like this, okay. Can you see here the serration traces of the serration of the undertype okay and this is uh, as i say we don't have other examples of this kind of uh, and you can see even here some traces of uh, oak wreath so it's really remarkable again and uh, last thing, because of course we are running out of time, as always, I mean, uh, but I just want to show you these, uh, uh, there is this other, um, now, uh, in 142, so right after these two issues of Fulcinius and Publilius, uh, we also have uh, uh, another issue that, uh, I mean, quite certainly already Goebbler uh, identified as issued by Junius Silanus, because you can see here the Silanus, the Silanus head, and it's the same pun that uh, uh, he does uh, on Roman coinage, on Roman Republican coinage. So that's how it's been identified as uh, uh, Unius Silanus, who is predator in Macedonia. Now, what, now, the issues of Silanu, Silanus, uh, Silanus, sorry, are always, uh, are very, very often overstruck over Fulcinius, Publilius, we have several examples of this. But, the Wichonke collection, again, gives us something which is completely unprecedented. So let's see, I mean, let me see this, if this is the right one, which is, uh, look, uh, this one. Look, can you see, before I show you the coin, can you please uh, see the that here, look, you can read here again, omega and ni here, okay? And uh, you can see even some oak here. So now, this one, 
has been seen, uh, has been interpreted, and I think I totally agree with it, uh, with a Silanus overstruck on an issue, a civic issue of, uh, here do you go, I'll, I'll angle it better, let's see, uh, yeah, here, let's see, no, okay, here, look, there you go, okay. So of Amphibolis, a civic issue of Amphibolis. So this shows uh, that Silanus, uh, this issue of Silanus, what not only struck over previous questorial issues, but even over civic issues. So it gives us even more clues about the circulation uh, pool in Macedonia. Now, I mean, I would have so much more to show you. I mean, we are, but we are basically, and I want to give you time if you want to ask questions. And uh, who knows, if uh, there is uh, time, uh, I will do even the part three of this presentation. But let's see, because really, I, I do not have more time to show you the other incredible coins, some of the other incredible coins I have here. Any question for me? Because otherwise I will just show more, qu more coins. Huh? This is uh, usually... I'd like to ask a question. Yes. Hi. 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 I'm, I'm Warren Esty. And yeah, yeah. Crawford wrote a book, Coinage and Roman and Money under the Roman Republic, published in 1983. Yes. How modern numismatists feel about what he did. If you, I mean, uh, Warren, if I mean, I mean, like I, the reality is that that book uh, served as a model for Wichonke, for Rick Wichonke, when he created uh, his collection. So the first coins uh, in this collection were actually bought uh, in 1986, so the year after that was published. And for example, the Celtic coinage, so you really are spot on. So the coinages, for example, the Celtic coinages that he, um, he included uh, in his treatment, uh, included in his treatment of uh, Gaul, are actually the ones that uh, Rick uh, bought for his collection. So um, while, uh, of course, thank God, I mean, uh, research uh, moved uh, forward, uh, let's say, still uh, that 1985 book by Crawford uh, remains absolutely fundamental and at the time was absolutely visionary and that w that's exactly what inspired, inspired Rick uh, to buy all these coins. So, just, so it's fantastic, that's exactly the thing, yes, that was the model for him. And so uh, he thought, um, I mean, of course, uh, RPC was not there at the time, clearly, because the first volume was then published in 1992. Uh, but he thought that there was so much more and before um, 50 BC. And so that's how we did it. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, he also had an intuition about the importance uh, of uh, non-state coinages. I mean, for example, Crawford in 1982 uh, published uh, this corpus uh, of, uh, I don't know, Italian uh, imitations of Roman Republican coinage. That one, uh, of course, has been then served as a model for other ones, so really, yes. Crawford, even in this case, uh, is absolutely the reference point because that's what Rick used to collect these coins. So these coins are, the, coin, the Wuchonke collection is a sort of uh, a highly skilled collector answer, uh, highly skilled and highly learned collector answer to that book. Thank you. So, any other questions for me? No more? Okay, so 
If you don't have questions, and I'm not saying you should not have questions, please. I, okay, so let's see, because I have like three more minutes. So, and I don't have time. I mean, I wish I could make you vote uh, on stuff. Uh, but for example, okay, um, Rick uh, had, uh, uh, had some incredible coins, uh, uh, absolutely unique, uh, for example, uh, trellis coins. Okay, so these are uh, early Sistophora. Right? Let's see if I can see this one. You can see it better. Yes, this is fun, 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 fun. Okay, look. Um, Ashton, Richard Ashton, in uh, 2003 or four, I don't remember this one, three or four, uh, wrote a super interesting article where he identified, you see all these, uh, um, uh, sorry, abri uh, letters here. You can see, for example, this one here too. You see underneath the Nike, there are some letters. Let's see, sorry, if I put it, sorry, exactly. Yeah, there you go. You see all uh, here, Oloyos, uh, and this one, uh, Yup, uh, for example. He, uh, Ashton, identified uh, these uh, as, uh, um, as Macedonian months and the initials of Macedonian months. Now, for example, this one is fantastic. Please notice that this one, which is Yup for Yuberberetaios, Uber which is the month of September, has been overcut, you can see here, a cut over a gamma, which is the month uh, Gorpaios, which is the month before Okay, so for example, this is absolutely unique, and this is, of course, quoted by Ashton in that article. Let's see. Let's see something which is fun. Another fun thing. Okay, now it's two. Okay, just one thing here. For example, um, this is on the contrary. This is a very nice Christophorus uh, in um, Nisa. Nisa is this little, little Lydian town. Now, the thing is that uh, you see here that there is this letter alpha, so this is the year one of some era. And usually what it was taught is was the era of uh, Sulan age. Basically, Sulan age, Sulan era is the era adopted by the province of Asia after the end of the first uh, Mithridatic War, 85. Now, there was a hoard that was found in 2002, and then, unfortunately, was dispersed on the market. But in this hoard that was found in 2002, and firmly dated to 1989 BC, so five years before the end of the Mithridatic War, was found this coin. So not this issue, but this coin I'm showing you now, okay? So this, for example, this coin, which is now in this collection, changed the dating of the coinage of this city because it clearly shows that the coinage of, for example, this is Stophorai of Nisa, where began to be produced uh, during the first Mithridatic War, not after it. Okay, so anyway, now it's late for everybody. I'm sorry because I just went over only, I wish you could see my tray, I had 40 coins, but at the same time, I literally cannot, could not uh, show you these coins because really these coins, uh, the coins in this collection are uh, the product of somebody who really, really, really knew about this coinage and then chose the most curious uh, specimens 
okay? And so this is important, it was important for me to give you at least some historical context for this. You will find much more clearly uh, in the catalog and perhaps uh, in, a na in the next long table. So thank you very much really for your presence here. I hope you enjoy this presentation and uh,